Hi, welcome to More Than Just an Allergy. I'm Allie and today we will be talking about corn allergies. I am so excited to be talking about this because I've been wanting to make a video about corn allergies for a long time now. I'm going to be sharing a lot of tips and tricks on how to avoid corn and baking products that use corn and that you'll have to watch out for those. I'll be talking about substitute products that you can still get your corn fix from. I will try to be as short and concise as I can while also going over as much as I can on this topic because there's so much to go over and I feel like it'll be impossible for me to cover it all and not take 20 minutes. So let's get started. You first find out that you have a corn allergy, you pretty much have to start checking the labels on every single thing you buy from here on out because corn is literally in everything, everything, everything. No joke. It can be corn, corn meal, corn flour, corn starch. And then let's not forget high fructose corn syrup or corn syrup. There are two different types of corn allergies. You can just be allergic to corn and anything that has the word corn in it. Or there are these poor people who suffer from extreme corn allergies and they are also highly allergic and sensitive to corn derivatives. What is a corn derivative? Well, there's lots of different things in the world that are made from corn, but they don't actually have the word corn in them, like dextrose. Dextrose is a man-made sugar that is made from the sugar from corn. There's also maltodextrin. Um, and so there's a lot of different things that, uh, different names that corn is using. But you might not be so sensitive to dextrose or maltodextrin, but you are sensitive to corn syrup or corn starch. Now for me, I am not one of those people who are extremely sensitive to corn derivatives. So that's one of the first things you should do is figure out if you are so sensitive to corn that you cannot even have corn derivatives. So I would say that you for, should first cut out all things with the word corn in them and see how you do. Give it a few months. And if you're still having a lot of problems, then go to the next step and then take out corn derivatives and then see if everything starts improving then. My husband will tell you that I like to say that corn is poison because that is pretty much what it has become. If people don't use it just to eat corn mainly anymore, they use it as a sweetener and that is where it gets really tricky and very unhealthy for you. Um, it's actually healthier for you to eat cane sugar than high fructose corn syrup or corn syrup. The corn syrup affects your blood sugar levels drastically more than just cane sugar. Our bodies are more equipped to digest and handle cane sugar than they are to handle corn syrup. When you find out you have a corn allergy, you're going to start making a lot of homemade goods, and that means baking. So when you are baking, two things you really have to watch out for are cornstarch. And cornstarch is in powdered sugar, and it's also in baking powder. So a substitute for baking powder is you take two parts cream of tartar to one part of baking soda and you mix that together. And that is pretty much your baking powder. Powdered sugar is a little more difficult. You have to have sugar, a, a blender, and then tapioca starch. For every one cup of cane sugar that you use, you need one tablespoon of tapioca starch. And you just, you put all of your sugar in the blender and you blend it and then add in the tapioca starch and that's your powdered sugar. It's not going to be as fine as powdered sugar because you're, 
you're blending it yourself, but it does the job. It's going to be a little gritty in the taste. I've made lots of frosting with um, my homemade powdered sugar and it tastes great just the same. And for those of you who don't know, powdered sugar is also called confectioner's sugar. So if you are looking for powdered sugar in a product's label, you will have to watch out for the word confectioner's sugar also. If you're also having to go gluten-free and you're avoiding corn, you need to watch out for gluten-free flours because some of them will have corn starch in them. I have two of my favorite gluten-free flours here. Um, Bob's Red Mill and then King Arthur. Neither of them have the cornstarch in them. But if you don't have to avoid wheat, then you can just keep using wheat flour and that makes it easier. With corn allergies, it's very difficult to enjoy Mexican food because all of the tortillas and the chips are mainly made from corn. So this is what you need to do. You need to find some beanitos. They are chips that are made from beans, and I think that they taste pretty good. This one is Hint of Lime, but they also have a regular restaurant style, but they also have a pinto one. They also have a nacho um, one, and so you can find those at um, most natural health food stores. Another problem that you'll run into is finding chips that are corn free. The best chips out there like Doritos or Cheetos Puffs or Cheetos, they are all made from corn. So you're going to have to find corn free chips. And some of my favorites are the Benitos, um, but also Simply Lay's. They have Ruffles and then they also have just regular uh, Lay's potato chips, but they do not have corn oil in them. A lot of potato chips will still have corn oil in them, or it will say made with canola oil and or corn oil. So you have to obviously avoid those. Another good chip alternative and substitute are hippie puffs. Well, we call them hippie puffs at my home, but they're called hippies. Um, they're made from um, chickpeas or garbanzo beans, and I think they taste pretty good. This is vegan white cheddar, and there's also lots of other different flavors they have. For crackers, um, cornstarch is one of their favorite things to put in there. I buy the, the Nabisco Good Thins for my son, just the regular um, rice cracker ones. If you love um, syrup on your pancakes, you're going to have to switch to 100% um, pure maple syrup because any other maple syrups out there will have corn syrup in them. You're also going to have to look for corn-free cookies. Uh, a lot of cookies are made with corn starch, obviously, or also high fructose corn syrup. Um, for those of you who also are avoiding wheat, so you'll have to find gluten-free and corn-free um, cookies. The best option is to make your own cookies. An easy peanut butter cookie recipe is one cup of peanut butter, one cup of sugar, and one egg, and that's all. You can make chocolate chip cookies or sugar cookies. If you want something quick and easy, this is one of my favorite cookies. I actually like them better than Oreos. I think they taste better. They just kind of melt in my mouth. So they're corn-free and gluten-free. So there are obviously blatantly obvious things that have corn or corn syrup in them, like soda. Soda is just one of the worst things for you to be drinking. So if you are a soda addict, I would suggest you cut that and nip it in the bud right away. And, and even diet soda, like just stop soda altogether. Something that can help you get off of soda is to transition to cane sugar sodas, um, like Jones sodas or Boynton brand. Those are really good. Um, so you can try to wean yourself off of your normal soda and go on to the cane sugar ones. And then from then on, try to slowly wean yourself off of sodas just in general. It's fine to have a soda every once in a while. But if you're having one every day or multiple times a week, um, I would say to not do that. Maybe try to just have one once a week. Something that we did was we would just have a, a Jones soda every Friday for dinner. 
um, to help get our, our soda fix in. But there are many other places where corn syrup is hiding that you wouldn't normally think that it's, it's hiding in there. Um, some products that that will have corn syrup in them are nuts, lunch meat, packaged meats like hot dogs or sausages, jam, breads, crackers, obviously chips, cereals. Cereals will be made with cornmeal or corn starch or even high fructose corn syrup and chocolate milk. Yes, there's even corn syrup in chocolate milk. Gross, disgusting. I, I don't even want to have chocolate milk ever again once I found that out. Also, medication. You will have the hardest time finding medication and over-the-counter pills that do not have cornstarch in them. The name brand Benadryl does not have cornstarch in it. Also, some Tylenol and Advil's will have cornstarch in them. So you have to read the labels. Labels, labels, labels. Always check the labels. If you want to start any habits today, start checking labels. I cannot stress that to you enough. So many times I have bought products and came home only to realize that I didn't read the label and it had corn in it. Sometimes I found out after the fact and had to suffer. Corn starch can also find its way into chewing gum. So cosmetics and gravies and sauces and soups. It can also be found in canned vegetables um, or canned fruits. My kids love canned peaches, but a lot of the canned peaches or canned pears, they will have corn syrup in them. I buy the Walmart brand and it is made with 100% um, juice. It has the peaches in juice instead of in corn syrup. Corn is also hiding in ice cream. So you'll have to look at the ingredients and labels of ice cream. Um, there are a lot of healthy ice cream brands out there now. Most of them are dairy free also, but um, I love Haagen-Dazs. They have a lot of good corn free, gluten free options. Also corn oil is used in margarine. So you are going to have to switch to butter, which is so much healthier for you anyways. Okay, I think I covered a lot right there and who knows, maybe I'll have to make another video for this if I forget anything. But there you have it, some quick tips and tricks of how to avoid corn and what to look out for and what to avoid if you are allergic and sensitive to corn derivatives. Um, here is a list of foods and you can just find this on Pinterest. That's really where I've gotten a lot of my information and, and help from is Pinterest. Pinterest is my best friend. So if you need to find this list again, you can just look on Pinterest and lots of people put on their list of um, corn derivatives. So there's obviously corn flour, corn starch, corn meal, corn gluten, corn oil, high fructose corn syrup or corn syrup. Then you get into the dextrins, dextrose. Dextrose is in a lot of things um, like food coloring, baby foods, berries, caramel color, um, cheese foods and spreads, chocolate products, citric acid, You'll find citric acid in a lot of apple sauces, different packaged fruits like that. So watch out for citric acid if you are allergic to the corn derivatives. Vinegar is another thing that is derived from corn. So you might have to start making your own barbecue sauce or ketchup because that has vinegar in it. Lactic acid is also a corn derivative because it's made with dextrose maltodextrins, maltodextrose, fructose or crystalline fructose, ethanol, free fatty acids, maize, sorbitol. You need to watch out for xanthan gum because xanthan gum is made from corn. It's a corn derivative. So things like Bob's Red Mill and King Arthur Flour, they have xanthan gum in them already. So you're going to have to look out for a gluten-free flour that doesn't have cornstarch in it or xanthan gum. And then there's also waxes on produce. 
Yes, there's corn in those too. You will have to grow your, grow your own food or go organic because they will not be using waxes on foods. Some people are sensitive to the pesticides and insecticides. I'm not sure if those have corn in them or not, but if you are highly allergic to and sensitive to corn derivatives, I would suggest to just completely go organic because then you don't have to deal with the waxes on the foods or the, the pesticides. So if you are sensitive to corn derivatives, you'll have to make your own foods, just go all organic and um, try to avoid processed foods in general because that's where a lot of the corn is going to sneak in to your diet is through processed foods. Good luck. This is a very, very hard thing for you to go through, but there is one upside to this and it's that by avoiding corn, you will be so much healthier in the long run and you will feel so much better because you're no longer consuming this poison. Please like and subscribe for more. Thanks.